sponsored by Displate. What if I told you that there's a technique that will make your miniatures look smoother than ever instantly? And it's not even difficult to learn. And you'll be surprised that this technique is frowned upon in principle because it's said to not produce that great of a result. But if we just switch out one little component, everything changes and it becomes an instant recipe for the smoothest blends you ever produced. I have been teaching miniature painters since almost two decades now. And even though a lot of the approaches changed over time and some techniques came and went again, there has been one constant. Painters want to learn how to paint smooth gradients and they consider it one, if not the most important thing to go from beginner to intermediate and beyond. If only I could learn to blend quickly. All my travels would go away. Now, while that is not exactly true, there is a way to do smooth blends within minutes. But how is that possible? Last week, I started a new series looking at different approaches and how they compare to each other in speed, ease of use, scalability, and final result. And the reception was really good, so I wanted to do another one right away. And I think this one is a really important one because it will answer all the questions that we just touched upon and more. For this technique, we need to choose the midtones we want to use and apply them to the miniature. And it doesn't really matter what color you use to prime, just pick a primer color that makes it easiest to apply your midtones quickly. I decided for orange and white as my main colors, and the white primer really helps with getting intense orange, and you get why white primer is good for painting white. And I know that white is not particularly a midtone for painting white, but when has white ever played by the rules of miniature painting? So let's unpack everything I stated in the introduction. Enter the star of the show, contrast paint. If the color tone you want to use doesn't exist as a contrast paint, a mix of acrylic paint and contrast medium will perform equally good. For example, I use Celestra Grey mixed with contrast medium and I'm going to use it as a wash. Washes and inks were a big no-no during the time that I learned my painting chops, mainly because the formulas were horrible and you didn't have a lot of control over where they would go. They just follow a combination of gravity and viscosity, and on top of that, they could leave some really ugly coffee staining. I never bothered to paint with a wash approach again until contrast paint came around, because it has a tendency of staying in areas that you would want to shade in any more sophisticated painting approaches, especially if you guide them a little. When they dry, they just create these really smooth gradients. So here you can see how I use my contrast mix to create shading on the white surface. And the paint just stays in the recesses without staining too much of the surface that I want brighter. And it pulls around the color, for example, which I would shade with a volumetric approach as they face more downwards than upwards. You can see how it defines all kinds of shapes nicely, like on the shoulder guard. And as I will show you on the orange in a bit, for most colors, you only need one pass for a great result. On the white, we need a couple of passes, but that is not necessarily a bad thing because this is a good exercise for glazing. Think back to the first few times you tried to stack these thin layers on top of each other, trying to get that smooth gradient. How much time did that take? And more importantly, how hard was it? With contrast paint, we can push the pigment in the liquid to pull in areas we want darker, while it barely stains the areas we want light at all. And just make sure to cover all of the area first, so a gradient can form and push these pigments towards the area you want darker. You can see that on the power fist and also on the front of the armor. Gradually stacking these thin layers of paint towards shaded areas, always waiting for each layer to dry and covering less and less area. The next step is to bring back contrast. Now that I applied a couple of layers of contrast paint over the white, everything got knocked down a little, which means we do have a shade for the whites and the mid -tone. Now all I need to do is bring out some pure white again. But then I started with edge highlights, like on these edges facing down, and I went for a bit of a sketching approach on these higher up elements and anything that's facing up. I particularly enjoyed how just a few thin layers made everything come together on these chest plates. Placement of highlights does start with the shading process because we do just leave out the areas we want highlighted. So here I can just place highlights right in the middle of these parts I left out, like on the shoulder and the power fist. And if you're unsure where to place highlights, you can check out some of my videos where I touch on volumetric highlighting or download some of my PDFs from Patreon. Almost all of them deal with the subject in one way or another. To shade the orange, I used five parts Griffhound orange and added about one part of Fire Slayer Flesh. And here you can finally see how simple the approach is for colors other than whites and probably black. The contrast paint creeps into the recesses nicely, darkens them properly and in an intense way with just one pass without leaving any coffee staining because we can just cover the whole area. But even as we do that, the intensity of the orange main color stays intact. On the pants, we don't need to do a lot of guiding 
On the helmet, I made sure that the sides would be stained a lot more than the top to max out that contrast between the elements. On these wrinkly parts, it's literally just one brush stroke to apply all of the shading. And again, the huge thing here is how it dries with an absolutely smooth gradient. For the highlights, I was looking at a couple of references that had saturated orange tones in them. And I concluded that if I just started mixing in yellow, it would look just great. The jump from orange to yellow isn't that big, especially if you mix an in-between tone like I did here for my first highlights. And that's why the layers go on relatively smooth too. And as you can see, I'm just building up the highlights following a senator highlight pattern. And eventually, I used pure yellow for the last highlights on the clothes. For the helmet, I also started with my orange-yellow mix, but eventually I added some white to the yellow because I wanted to convey more of a reflective metallic surface. And the same goes for the fingers of the power. A big part of what I love about the 40k universe is the rich background and the millions of stories that can be told within it. And among the things that drives these stories has always been the art of Warhammer 40k. I always wanted to put some of these stories come to life on canvas on my walls. But the question has always been, how can I do that in a convenient way? Fortunately, this play has solved this problem for me as they just released their official Warhammer 40k line and I'm a huge fan. You can find your favorite Space Marine chapters as well as a variety of Xenos factions and also brand new Leviathan related artwork. This looks like a great start and I'm sure there will be a lot more designs coming in the future. This plate is high quality metal poster line design so you can express your passions in a way that will stand the test of time. Not only is the print quality of these metal canvases top of the line, their amazing mounting system allows the plates to just snap to your walls. It's super easy to apply, just clean your wall with these wipes they send you, stick the leave on, apply the magnet and you're good to go. The good thing is you can always adjust them later, which means skewed pictures are a thing of the past. And if you want to change it up, just swap out the plates. This plate provides other licensed brand artworks as well as artwork by a variety of artists from Frazetta to video games and even art for kids among the 1 million available designs. The good thing is whenever you're bored of your walls you can just take one design off and put another one there without damaging the poster or your walls in just seconds. No, change it back again. So use the link in the description to check out what this split has to offer or use the code Trevarion on checkout to enjoy up to 30% discount on your order. Not only will your walls forever be thankful, you're also supporting this channel in the process. When I checked how the overall contrast worked on the model, I realized that some of the shadows on the white armor were not deep enough. So I mixed a dark gray with contrast medium and carefully pin washed the recesses, especially in these areas that were facing down. The third big element that was still left to do on this Batman wannabe was the utility belt. So I applied a solid desaturated green base layer and shaded it with a blue-gray contrast paint. The armor already had a lighter shade of blue-green in the shadows, so I reused these colors of my imaginary gamut mask and also placed the highlights with the celestial gray I already had used on the armor. At that point, there was about 1 hour and 50 minutes on the timer and I decided to take it easy on the details. Coloring in the rivets, some detail on the hose, and a rudimentary glow on the power fist. I also added a basic glow effect to the eyes and the plasma coil and took a bit of a shortcut by painting the spotlight like a gem instead.
in just under two hours it was almost done and just wanted to add a couple of decals for that last bit of detail. So let's look at the rating I would give this approach. But before we start, I need a name for this series. I was going to call it Technique X, Trash or Godsend, but that didn't resonate well. Yeah, I'm not so good with naming things, so I'm open to suggestions. So let's look at the first factor, which is speed. It took me just over two hours, and here's the rundown of how much each of the steps took. Applying base colors always takes long, something that can be sped up with an airbrush and masking. The actual process of shading the white took a while, that's why I wanted to show it so that you are aware that black and white are a bit of an exception to the rule. But on a color base, it only takes a minute. Depending on how serious you take your edge highlighting and the additional volumetric highlights you want to apply, you can probably shave off half an hour, or you could just use a sponge chipping for some quicker edge definition. There's lots of ways to save time on this, and I have a lot of suggestions in my videos. Of course, batch painting can probably save a bit of time, but I don't think it would save as much as in the last video, since there isn't a lot of changing or cleaning of tools or switching between types of paints, for example. I'd give it a seven because you can definitely work a lot faster than I did. And let's face it, I always take an extra half an hour to try and make it pretty. So if you just want it done, I'm pretty sure you can do this a lot faster. Now I renamed this category ease of use because difficulty was a bit of a double negative. It was a bit difficult to wrap your head around how I got to my result. So I think this is a bit more straightforward. In general, I think this technique is easier to use on organic shapes uh, or clothing with folds, for example. On these, it's a simple one pass technique with a bit of guiding the pigment. Can take a bit more effort on armor uh, depending on the shapes and especially the color you want to use. The absolute minimum of tools that you need for this technique is a brush, some regular acrylic paint with contrast medium. I recommend to at least get some contrast paints though as they most of the time are a lot more chromatic and intense than regular acrylics and it will make your results look a lot better. So as far as tools goes, that would be a straight 10 for me. It can have a small learning curve though, depending on what features you use it on. And when it comes to some of the layer stacking that you have to do in certain colors. Another thing that can be tricky is to find the right shades for your base colors. And you could say that it's pretty straightforward, just use a darker green on the lighter green. But sometimes you will want to do things like shading a warmer color with a cooler tone and then it becomes a bit unpredictable how the result will look. And you might need some experimentation. So overall, I give this an 8.5. For the end result, even with minimum effort, I think the result looks really good. And I'm aware that a lot of my brush skills make the end results a bit more polished than a beginner would uh, be able to achieve. But even if you only block in the highlights with one single layer, this is a huge improvement as far as smoothness in combination with achievable contrast goes. For example, you could dry brush some nice contrast pretty quickly, but it will look rough as far as the transitions go. So yeah, once you get the hang of the intricacies, I think this approach can produce looks that are a solid eight. Bones category fun factor. To me, this is a lot of fun because I can quickly block in colors and shadows and then get a little creativity in on the highlights uh, without spending too much time on building the gradients. It feels a lot more painterly than other approaches while still being relatively noob friendly. Like even if your last highlights are a bit rougher or heck, even if you <laughs> aren't super confident and only, only wants to go for edge highlights or sponged edge highlights, it still looks super impressive. Like I discussed in this video, it is already rewarding because it feels like this is a way to quickly improve your skills and elevate your paint jobs towards something that could at least be called intermediate with relatively little investment. If I had this available back when I started, I'd probably even have a painted army. So let me know your thoughts about this technique. And if you want to start with episode one, you can watch it here. Other than that, thanks for watching. Keep pushing that pigment and I'll see you in the next episode.